this is how to get healthy, strong hair without feeling like you always have to buy it, shave it off, or cry your eyes out. I have six great tips for you, but I must say tip number six has to be my favorite and probably will knock it out of the park. That's just that's just my opinion. Without further ado, let's just keep this keep going. <laughs> now, it doesn't matter if you prefer your hair short, medium, or long, or if you like to keep it in braids or twists or whatever. This is for you if you simply wish to maintain a beautifully flourishing head of hair. This is also for you if your goal is length, because length retention is a beautiful byproduct of keeping your hair healthy, meaning health is the best way to ensure your hair will retain its length as it grows. Granted, I do wish I understood this when I first went back to natural. I took great care of my hair, but I was watching the clock, waiting and waiting for any sign, signal, or proof that my hair was growing. It was worse than watching paint dry because I was whining and crying all the time. And yes, I am a whiner when it comes to my hair. Just ask my mother, ask my mother. Without further ado, let's get into tip number one. You're probably familiar with this. You've heard me say it if you've been with me for a while, multiple times. You've heard other naturalistas say it, but uh, a lot of people still need to hear this and be reminded. Tip number one is use minimal styling tools, okay? They're best used when the hair is wet. They're even better used when the hair is soaked and wet. And they're even better used when the hair is soaked and wet and has conditioner in it. I am a huge proponent in doing all that I can to finger style and finger detangle without the use of the styling tools, minimal use. I do finger styling and finger detangling about 90% of the time and then the rest is with the styling tool after i have done that when my hair is wet soaked and wet with conditioner all right as far as picks they're best used if you're picking from the center of your strands and then you stop before you get to the ends they're even better used sparingly and even better than that they're best used to scratch your scalp, and that's it. <laughs> Specifically, if your goal is to retain length. Now, I understand some people don't care about that. If they're not trying to retain length necessarily, and they always keep their hair cut and quaffed, then they're keeping the ends trimmed and, and everything is fine. Okay, I will get slightly deeper into or a little give a little more information about um styling tools a little further in this conversation but when you are picking your hair out and you are trying to retain length if you must use a pick the best thing to do is to use your fingers first finger style first then you take a pick i noticed that the metal pronged picks are a little harsher on the hair than the plastic. Now, this could be different for in each person, you know, each hair type, okay? This is all specific to the type four naturals with the kinky, coily, tightly curled hair, okay? People who have hair like mine, but this can also apply to type three naturals as well, okay? Just to clarify. Um, so when you are after you finger detangled your afro, if that is your style, then you can take the pick and go halfway in, okay? So you're halfway at the length, not from root to tip, but above the root, I would say about a couple inches, depending on the length of your hair. Go halfway in and then pick up, okay? Go ahead and pick toward the ends, but do not clear the end. All right. Remove gently. Do this gently and then remove the pick before you get to the ends of your hair. Okay. Tip number two, 
hydrate and moisturize. Water is the best and most practical way to hydrate your hair, okay? Aloe is a close second. And when I added aloe to my regimen, it made a huge difference. My hair was easier to manage. It was softer and pillowy and shinier. I actually have a video where I actually used aloe vera to detangle my hair and I allowed my hair to get super tight and knotted and I used aloe vera. Okay. Um, and about this hydration and moisturizing, I used to think this meant that I should oil, oil, oil my hair. I grew up getting my scalp greased and my hair would get oiled. Well, it would get greased during the styling. It seemed to work back then, and I know it did, but what I forgot is that my mother would always dampen my hair first, okay, with water. Then she would apply the grease. And by grease, I mean Vaseline. We didn't have hair grease. She was using Vaseline on my hair. And when complete, and that was when completing my styles. And then as an adult, when I went back to natural, instead of Vaseline, I used an oil that was available in the kitchen. Whatever was available. It could be, you know, like vegetable oil. It could be the corner of a bottle of ve vegetable oil. I was using whatever. I was a little all over the place back then. Um, I mean, there was no YouTube. Heck, even the internet was only a few years old. And there was no Wi-Fi. Okay, that tells you how, far, as a matter of fact, we had AOL dial-up. AOL stood for America Online. So that tells you. And, and we had natural hair message boards. So there was no video. We were typing all the things out. I mean, all of the steps and the directions and, and the tips and the tricks. Anyway, all that to say my hair was greasy but not necessarily hydrated or moisturized. Okay. Now, it wasn't until one summer, about, it was like over a two-month period when my hair grew like wildflowers. Okay. I remember I wore an Afro puff every day. So each day, you know, I would get in the shower, you know, without a shower cap, because after all, I'm wearing an Afro puff. It didn't matter. And I would just get in the shower and I would allow the steam to do its thing. And when I got out, I would apply oil and I would puff it and then I would go. And, I, and then every few days, I would say every three to four days, I would co-wash with an inexpensive conditioner. Like back then, it was like a 99 cent, maybe VO5 or Suave or something. But let me tell you, I was so amazed at how quickly my hair sprouted. At that point, my whining and crying stopped. <laughs> and, you know, it was a very simple, basic regimen, you know, just to throw an added bonus in there. It was a simple, basic regimen. Um, Co-wash uh, products were not out because we came up with uh, co-washing in the natural hair community back then. That was something we did. And then all of a sudden, when the manufacturers, you know, started seeing this, then they created these other divisions of, you know, these companies that weren't even making stuff for black hair. They then came up with a division for the black hair, the natural hair. And they started creating this co-wash. And I say it in air quotes because co-washing is simply using conditioner to wash your hair, not shampoo. But I digress. Anyway, so with tip number two and the hydrating and the moisturizing, you lock in the hydration with a good moisturizing cream, even a creamy leave-in conditioner. And then you lock all that in with a strand penetrating oil or shea butter, okay? Listen to your hair. It knows what it needs. What is a strand penetrating oil? Olive oil, avocado oil, like that, okay? Who am I and why should you listen to my song and dance? What? Hey, it's your girl, Rally Girl. 
how you doing? <laughs> I have been gracing the YouTube stage for 11 years, bringing you all the things, simple, easy, fun, and versatile natural hair, darling, showcasing that our hair is in fact all that and then some our hair is easy to love and therefore easy to maintain in style i have bring been bringing you lazy girl natural styles for all occasions protective styles installs cover girls head wrap styles how to's diy natural hair products for the at home stylist and even product reviews I've been a hair enthusiast, probably obsessed, let's just call it that, since childhood. My mother saw that in me and granted me a say in what style I would wear for the day. I wasn't allowed to relax my hair into high school, I would say about age 15, 16, but I came back to natural in 2003 where I big chopped. I grew my hair out from the nape of my neck to my tailbone. And since then, I've clipped and cut it about waist length, you know, multiple times. And I, again, grew it out to tailbone length. I did this just by following the practical tips that I'm sharing with you today. I am also the author of Natural Hair Made Simple and Good Hair Day companion ebooks, which are designed to help type 4 naturals easily navigate through their quest for healthy natural hair. There's so much more about me, but this I feel is most relevant for the scope of this talk. <laughs> so let's move on to tip number three. Tip number three, you've heard me say it before, keep a clean scalp. You can do a DIY scalp cleanser, which I believe I did a video for that on this channel. I know I did a blog post for it. I'll be sure to leave that in the description. Or you can get commercial scalp, scalp cleansers. Even in braids, faux locks, and twists, there are options to cleaning your scalp, even if you don't like washing your hair while it's in either of these styles. Like I... Transparency, 100, keeping it 100. I do not like washing my hair when it's in a braided style, like in installs and stuff like that. I just do not like that. Now, I know that it has to do with my hair type and density and, and all of those things, the texture, all of that, um, because I see that it does work very, very well for a lot of other people. But it's just something about it. My hair gets to looking frizzy and all this. And I'm like, you know what? What's most important is that I keep the moisture, keep my hair hydrated while it's in that style. And then I can always go in and cleanse and, and clean my scalp. So that is how I roll. And I understand if you roll <laughs> the same the same way, okay? T tip number four. I'm just talking so much can barely talk. <laughs> Tip number four, keep your ends healthy. Clip them ends when needed. Pamper them ends with a little extra hydration and moisture. Now, I will do a big trim as I see fit, you know, as I feel that I need it, but no sooner. Because some people, they'll trim, get their hair trimmed on the schedule and then wonder why they don't have length. Well, you got the lady cutting your hair every four weeks or six, whatever the schedule you have. It's like, give it a chance to do the thing before you have her go in and trim what's not even necessarily to trim. She's going to do it because she's getting paid to do it. You know what I'm saying? So if you say, I want to trim, she's not going to say, well, you don't need to trim. Well, some might, many might. I'm not going to put that on everybody. But the people that I know, their, their people, their stylists did not say, oh, you don't need to trim. <laughs> they went on and trimmed their hair and they're walking around with the same length for like years. <laughs> so anyway, I'll do it. I do my own. I'm not a professional, but you know, I know my hair. Okay, a professional might look at my hair and say, you know what, let's tweak this. And that's perfectly fine, too. But for me, I do it as I need it. No sooner than that. There is no schedule. Also, after I put my hair in twists, I like to dust my ends when needed, which helps extend the time between needing a regular trim. Like I said, I'm not a pro, but this is what works for me. Speaking of ends, overuse and uncareful use of combs, brushes, and picks can cause split ends. 
and damaged ends. I said I was going to get back to that, and this is it, okay? Also, although I'm a huge proponent of hydrating, moisturizing, and caring for all of your hair from the root to the tip, the ends do need, you know, they need a bit more uh, love and care because they do more, um, they do more of the heavy lifting. Um, so applying and locking in a little moisture on the tips of your hair every night, you know, gives it that extra kiss of love. After all, your ends are the oldest part of the strands. They rub against clothing and they tend to get more exposure than the rest of the hair strand. Okay. And dusting, just so you know, dusting means just clipping the scraggly ends of the hair while it's in small to medium twists or braids. And I like to do that when I have my hair in a smaller or medium, you know, small to medium uh, braid or twist, just because it's a little more thorough that way. All right. Tip number five, keep your hair nourished. Now, we know that many hair products aren't all natural, and that's okay. If you choose to still incorporate some of those products in your regimen, consider infusing them with other nourishing ingredients or create some elixirs and treatments, hair oils to amp, amp everything up a little bit, okay? Some of my favorite things to do is to use essential oils and herbs for hair masks to infuse in conditioners or butters and to make hair teas and glosses, etc. This is This really elevated my hair gain, okay? It will elevate the hair gain. So answer this. What if there was a way for you to simply and easily amp the nourishment of your hair without feeling like you're throwing the kitchen sink at your head, breaking the bank, or spending a lifetime on this thing? Would you go for it? Well, you can. I got my hand raised. <laughs> you can too. Reintroducing Good Hair Day. It is my ebook of organic DIY recipes for kinky, coily, curly hair textures. Good Hair Day takes you through an entire wash day from detangling to styling, and it's based on your hair needs and your lifestyle. So you get to select based on that, and you also get to select the recipes based on does your hair need strengthening? Does it need moisture? Does it need more nourishment? This book is broken down by wash cycle sections. So for example, the detangling, there's the detangling session, there's the wash session, there's the conditioning, the style, et cetera, okay? So it's broken down and very easy uh, for you to read and select what you need. Now in each section, there are several organic recipes to choose from and with each recipe, there is a breakdown of the benefits and instructions on how to use them. Some can also even be used to beautify your skin. Okay, so it's a two for. You don't have to use a recipe for every section of your wash cycle. So for example, if you're detangling and you wanna use something there, you can go ahead and use something for detangling only. Okay, if you need something, you know, a specific recipe for detangling and one for, say, conditioning, you can do that. Okay, you would just choose the recipe or recipes that your hair needs. Good Hair Day also conveniently includes a shopping list that gives you the ability to click the item you need so that you can have it delivered directly to your door. That's Good Hair Day. Let's get into tip number six. Keep your body hydrated and nourished. This one has to be my favorite. Let me tell you, I used to yawn when I would hear people say this because it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have heard everything there is to hear about eating right and the proper diet blah, blah, blah. And honestly, I find myself having the same response sometimes when I hear that. I mean, <laughs> like we all know already. However, I am a certified holistic healer. Okay. So I'm certified in holistic health, mind, body, and soul through Mind Valley. And what I know is it's more about the nourishment you put in your body 
and less about what you should stop eating, what you should and shouldn't eat, okay? Now, granted, there are a lot of poisons that people consume that we can do without, but when you properly arm your body with what it needs in order to function, it's better able to digest and combat some of the side effects that could eventually result from eating what the health gurus call the wrong foods, okay? Let's get into it, okay? Here's what. Your body will do anything that it needs to do to survive. So if you're not getting the proper nutrition, your hair, skin, and nails will reflect that. They will tell you, they will signal to you that, hey, we're not getting enough here, okay? And which is a, a beautiful thing, all right? Because then that's information that you can use in order to help yourself, to heal yourself. And the reason for all of this is because whatever you put in your body, your organs are going to draw as much hydration from it as they possibly can in order to function and keep the body going. So imagine eating a piece of bacon first thing in the morning, nothing else, no water, no nothing. Your organs are going, okay. We have something coming in, y'all. Let's get hydrated. Now imagine how much work your organs have to do in order to squeeze the hydration from bacon and eggs and toast. Or if you start your day with potato chips, imagine that, whatever. What happens is when the body doesn't get what it needs, the organs begin to borrow from the other organs leaving the other organs at a deficit, making it hard for them to do what they're meant to do, which then can cause a plethora of issues. This is a little off subject, just a little side note, but it's still totally relevant. Your body is designed to do what it has to do to survive. It doesn't care about good health or bad health. It cares about survival. That said, our organs are number one on the totem pole. So any nourishment goes there first. And the very last thing to get it, if there's anything left, is the hair, skin, and nails. So now what? What about this? Well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> no matter what so-called bad foods you eat, Here's how you can begin to set yourself up for success. Number one, drink at least eight glasses of water, spring preferably, per day. I know, I know. Water, water, I can't stand water. Do some coconut water. Coconut water is good. Coconut water has electrolytes. Herbal tea is good too. Preferably without sugar. If you must have sugar, local locally grown i think it's locally grown honey is it what is it grown anyway local honey okay that's a nutritional sugar if you must have it okay so at least eight glasses of water coconut water herbal tea is good i would not drink eight glasses of herbal tea necessarily but you can like you know exchange um a couple of those glasses of water let's make them eight ounces with a couple of you know cups of tea, all right? Eat fruit on an empty stomach. This is number two. Eat fruit on an empty stomach to allow the organs to feast and enjoy the hydration. Number three, eat all of your daily servings of veggies, but make sure that your first intake of your vegetables is the second thing you eat for the day. So after you eat your fruit, Give it about 30 minutes before you eat anything else. And then, you know, eat a serving or, or two of vegetables. You don't have to eat all the vegetables right after, but definitely eat at least one serving because you are arming yourself, okay? You are arming yourself and setting yourself up for success and you are healing your body. Like even just making these tweaks without removing anything else from your diet, you're going to see a difference. You're going to see a change. Feel into it. You know what types of fruit and vegetables that you like. Your body will tell you what it likes and doesn't like. 
okay? Now you can do smoothies, but my preference is to have the fruit smoothie separate from the vegetable smoothie, okay? Because this is still two separate things, fruit first. However, with the vegetable uh, smoothie, if you decide to go the smoothie route and you don't have to have all of your servings in the smoothies, but if you want to just switch things up a little bit, you can do that. But if the vegetable smoothie is difficult to get down because I get it, it's okay. It's cool to add an apple in order to sweeten it. Okay. Just make sure that there's no added sugar in either of your smoothies, no added fake white sugar. Okay. Um, just make it pure and simple fruit pure and simple vegetables or pure and simple vegetables with a pure and simple apple. To make it fun, try out fruits and vegetables that you've never had before. Do some experimenting, create some little recipes around that, you know, do some exploring. These things are rocket fuel for your body, hair, and your skin. Okay. I, I love this tip. I hope you loved all this as well. This was a very fun um, talk. Let me know what you think about it. And have you tried any of these things, you know, down in the comments. And until the next time, live simply and be kind.